I'm former Senator, State Senator Chris Langemeyer. It's my pleasure to have you all here at the Oak Ballroom. It's got a lot of history for those of us that grew up in this community. And uh, it's a great day to learn more about what you're going to vote on. So with that, I think uh, Paul brought it up. We are going to take questions at the end. So if you have questions for any of the speakers, otherwise there's a lot of great candidates for other roles here that would love to have questions afterwards. Um, so stick around and ask those. But for me, it's my opportunity to introduce Senator Luann Linehan. She was elected for the 39th district out of Omaha. She was elected in 2016, re-elected in 2020, and she is the chairman of the Revenue Committee. And so as you hear about the issues of property taxes and taxes, uh, she has been working hard on that issue for a number of years, and she is term limited out. This is her last year, so the special session was a big go for her. And so it's with great pleasure I introduce Senator Luann Linehan. Good evening. Thank you for letting me come. I don't really live in Omaha. I live in Elkhorn. I'm very specific about that. Even though the World Herald and I had a big fight and they finally decided, okay, we'll say Omaha area. Because I told them I ran from Elkhorn, that's my address, and now you make it look like I moved. Not good. Uh, I remember Chris when he was in the legislature. He did a great job down there. I wish he would come back. I don't know if he has any interest. We need good people. Uh, I want to thank Paul for inviting me rather persistently. I was in D.C. yesterday, and I'm going back next week for a birthday. I have two granddaughters in uh, northern Virginia, but he convinced me to be here. Um, I also look forward to meeting Tom Venzer's family. They, you can't imagine how hard he works and how dedicated he is to his causes, and I've worked with him a lot. Um, I will also mention, because I know he's going to follow me, so that makes me nervous, Governor Pillen, he is amazing how hard he works. I, I haven't met a lot of people in my life that can outwork me, but now I have. He's, uh, he, he works every day really hard. Um, I'm here to talk to you about school choice. It has been a battle beyond battles. So in the 23 session, we passed a bill, 753. A group of people, the teachers union, but also some progressives, the same people that backed the bad abortion bill, gathered the signatures to put it on the ballot to repeal it. It was a tax credit. It, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but just so you know, we have 35 different tax credits and we moved past that tax credit for school choice so kids could go to a school that works best for them. We also taxed, passed a child tax care credit. This one was 25 million, that one was 35 million. All the people that helped kill or try to kill this one are still trying to kill this one. They celebrated the 35 million for early childhood. So it's now about diverting money. It's about public schools not wanting competition, not wanting options for families. And it, it's silly, right? Because we live in Nebraska and Nebraskans love school choice. I don't know if you have children here that opt into other schools. I know there's about 30 to 40,000 kids who go to public schools in Nebraska, not the public school they're assigned to. They go to a different public school because that's what their parents feel will best suit them. The state spends about $120 million a year on that program. So we have that school choice. And if you're middle to upper income, you have choice because you can pay tuition. So who are we not letting have choice? The people who probably need it most, who have not had the luck that I had in my family. My kids went to both public school and private school. I could afford. I have grandchildren in Nebraska, seven. They have to remember five, now six in school. They're all in good public schools. But you know what? Their parents moved from what the district they were in to the district they're in now because they could afford to move. So the idea that we don't like choice in Nebraska is just not true. We do. We like it a lot. So since they got the signatures to repeal it and they were mad about the tax credit, which I never really believed, we said, okay, we'll just appropriate the money. So this year we approved, the legislature appropriated $10 million. And they again 
ran a petition drive to collect signatures to take it away from kids. So between last year's program, one group I'm pretty close to, but other groups, there's been over $5 million raised on the tax credit to send children to the school of their choice and their parents' choice, school that works for, for them. We have 10 million in appropriation, which started going out this week. We now have about 2,500 children on scholarships to a school that meets their needs that their parents can now take them to. And we're gonna have a ballot initiative to try to take those scholarships away from kids. So, I want you, I'm begging you actually, to vote to retain the scholarship for kids. It is, uh, Nebraska is one of two states in the whole union that doesn't have a program like this for children. It, uh, in Iowa now, not too far from Omaha, you know, you could, a lot of people live in Council Bluffs that work in Omaha. In Iowa, your child gets $7,000 to go to whatever school they want to go to. In Nebraska, we don't have that. They have a program in South Dakota, they have programs all around us. We're way behind in this fight. Uh, there's a lot of things that are said that are not true. I'm just gonna push back on one and give Governor Pillen a great deal of credit. In 2023, when we did the first school choice program, and as you know from reading any papers or news, Governor Pillen has worked every day very hard to address school funding and property taxes. When we passed the first tax credit for school choice, we increased state funding for public schools by 38%. The largest increase in state funding for public schools in three decades, basically since we've done the state aid for schools. We increased funding for special needs students in public schools, the state used to pick up 42%, we now pick up 80%. An unequalized school district now gets $1,500 per child, public school district, regardless if they're equalized or their needs. So again, nobody lost any money. As a matter of fact, the public schools got a 38% increase in state funding, and this year, Oh, most importantly, sorry if I'm still in, but you can repeat all this because that's good in politics. Uh, we set aside, because one of the concerns of public schools has always been, well, we can't trust the states because sometimes you change the formula and you don't give us as much money. So to push that worry aside, Governor Pillen, with the support of the legislature, but it was 100% his idea, we put a billion dollars and the Education Future Fund for public schools. That's one billion dollars. It was a joke all during session because the chairman of appropriations has a hard time saying a billion. So we are in good shape with public school funding. There's nothing that school choice does to harm public schools. So with that, I'll sit around, have any questions? Oh, and then, I can't believe I forgot this, people will kill me. There's still an option if you would like to, to uh, donate to the tax credit. This is how it works. You decide to give money to a tax credit for a child for a scholarship. You can give up to 50% of what you owe in Nebraska taxes, and instead of sending it to Department of Revenue, you send it to a scholarship organization. It costs nothing, and it helps kids. Thank you very much.